for my real hip hop heads only. The moment you so persistently advocated for has finally arrived. The critically acclaimed infamous Flea Lord is now on the set. This moment was not easy to arrive at as he's only got time to record, travel, promote, sell, smoke, think, write, engage with the people, rinse, and repeat. Dude said he was going to give you an album every month of the year. Ten joints in, and so far, dude keep coming up like the sun. I'm on the bandwagon. Why? Because he got mad bangers and is probably the most hated on man in the game right now. He was punching up. Now, he surveys the madness from halfway up the mountaintop. You motherfuckers thought you could kill this man's spirit, but Pete, do y'all not see he feeds off this shit? Fresh off of featuring on some of the most important hip hop albums of 2020, I take tremendous pleasure in reminding you that ignoring him would have probably worked better. But alas, this bell cannot be unrung. This nigga is loose. And you know what the biggest problem for you fucks is? Is that he knows he's thorough. You wished it never happened, but wishing will not make the man respected from New York to Japan any less confident in his ability to speak directly to the streets in a way that is unquestionably and uniquely his own. Motherfucker, can you hear me? The underdog became the boss on your watch. The fabric of this intro was a blend of 100% documentary and 0% cap. I wholeheartedly denounce snitching. But it would be irresponsible of me not to report that the man on the left side of your screen is letting off high caliber rounds indiscriminately in a residential district. This is not to be ignored, and every MC peddled and subpar material is currently, and until further notice, under the highest threat level. New York is on the way back around the block, and this time they brought the shooter. This is not my interpretation. I simply report the news. And the top story of the day is despite your best efforts. God has nonetheless made it possible for the stars to align, making it possible for me to say it brings me great pleasure to welcome for the first time on the Mike Power Show, Far Rockaway's own boss among bosses, the proverbial bull in hip hop's china shop, the most untamable, hardest working MC in the game, infamous Mob Flea, a.k.a. Fliego Delgado, a.k.a. Flea Lord. It's in the building. <laughs> what's, well, what's you know, that, that that right there? That right there just you just made my hair stand up, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> what the fuck you try to do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Salute, it's King. Yeah, man. I'm in the building with you, bro. Man, peace and blessings, man. I'm, I'll be lying if I said my hands wasn't shaking. Like honestly. I'm I'm keeping it a, a buck. Turn on the AC. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yo, yeah. thank you for when I talk about in the intro that you only got time to think, write, smoke, engage with the fans, record, promote, sell. The reason I'm saying that is because I follow you on IG. You every fucking where. And yeah. if you're not in LA where you at or Cali where you at right now. You in the studio working on some shit or you promoting some shit or you bigging up your people. You doing business behind the scenes. Lex, I got a shout out, Lex, who made mm -hmm. this happen. Bro. How can you go wrong with a dude that's solid standing next to you? Honestly. Hey, yo, yo. And, and hold on. Um, not to mention, you know, I got two daughters, so I am a father. During all of that, in the midst of all of that that's going on. Yeah. I got to set myself out to be a father and, 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 and put the daddy duties and lay that down. You know what I'm saying? 
And so, we definitely noticed that on our IG too. Big, big it up to family all the time, family man. And that's what I like to see. A lot of my brothers that's doing this thing right now, a lot of them is over 30 years old, getting it in, but showing what fatherhood looks like in real time. I love that. Let yeah, me get man, right to the thing. I, I don't want to, I don't want to waste no time because I know you're busy. Loyalty of death. Let's get into it. What is loyalty of death for that for those that don't know? All right, well, shit. Well, loyalty of death basically is why we call each other Lord. You know what I'm saying? You know, Lord is, stands for lo loyalty or death. Now, I don't really want to jack too much and, and talk too much about loyalty of death because we closed that chapter in our life, being the fact that a, a lot of people has passed away during COVID, and we don't know if it was sure of COVID or whatever it goes. You know, it's, it's just big myth, whatever. Yeah. And there's always three sides to the story, but peace and blessings to the ones that we did lost during COVID. So I didn't really want to jack the death part on late to your death no more. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I look at it when, you know, if we try to get uh, T-shirts out to kids or hats to kids, they can't really put death on them. I don't like the fact that they're young wearing loyalty to your death. So we just, we switched it over to Lord Mob. And, you know, like I said, loyalty of death stands for, um, uh, loyalty of death stands for the Lord while we jack the Lord, whatever. But uh, we're doing Lord Mob right now. And, you know, I, I feel like this is going to be another uh, business venture that's going to actually be more successful than loyalty of death. You okay, so now, Lord, we transitioning into Lord Mob right now. I did see you, you know, drop the promo for the website and everything. Great yeah. artwork, great vision. Uh, and Thank I know you. before this interview started, um, you talked about what the thought was and the movement behind that is. You spoke about Ito and, and the brother G4 Jack. Go, yeah, go yeah. Tell about All right, it. so basically, you know, right now, I really haven't announced this, but being that we're doing this interview and it's while I'm out here, you know, building with these gentlemen, TF and Funk P, um, I'm out here basically building with them and I'm going to push them under Lord Mob. You know what I'm saying? Lord Mob is basically we mobbing up. So I'm over here grabbing up these, you know, these, these, boy, these boys from out here in Cali that's putting in pain and talking they talk and they actually live in that shit. So, I, you know, I, I love that shit, but I, I feel like no one's ever took this step to, you know, from New York, a rapper, to reach out to other rappers and really, you know, bring them together. So this is why we're mobbing right now. And I'm going to push the mob brand for Prodigy, God bless his soul. You know, it has nothing to do with Infamous. It has nothing to do with Mob D. But I jacked the mob on the strength of Prodigy and Havoc and, the, you know, all the good brothers, Big Twin, you know, Godfather, Noy, everybody, you know, I could keep going. But um, we're doing the Lord Mob, basically. It's, like I said, it's way to death, but it's Lord Mob now, where I grab up Funk P, TF, Etho from Rochester, G4 Jag, which is, you know, he's, he's in Rochester right now, but from Harlem, and he's been all over. Uh, that's my brother. Basically, those four artists, TF, Funk P, G4 Jag, and Etho, plus myself, is going to be representing Lord Mob. And they're also still jacking what they jack. You know what I'm saying? Like, Etho, I'm not sure if it's still new crack ever. But, you know, it's it's Lord Mob slash New Crack Ever. Right, right. G4 Jag is Lord Mob slash Fly Family. Yeah, gotcha. TF is Lord Mob slash Everything Scandalous. So, you know, we're doing that with the brothers right now. And we're going to push Lord Mob to be bigger than just Flea Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be able to create bags for these brothers because I, you know, I genuinely fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? On human being time. Not this rap shit. This rap shit is always secondary. It's a gift that God gave us, you know, whether you believe in them or not. But it's just a gift that we have. You know what I'm saying? Um, but being solid as a man is what make you. And, and you know, I, I generally fuck with a lot of people in this, in, this, in this rap game where I fuck with them on real time more than rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big fan of, you know, the Hoka Zelda, um, Etho Spech, you know, uh, Pounds. Uh, the Black G's, you know what I'm saying? I can name so many people, you know what I'm saying? There's some that people don't know, but right now what I'm trying to do is with people that I see that need that shot and being that I got this little platform, I'm willing to share my little platform to see what I'm capable of doing with these brothers because I see the people that do have platforms sometimes, they really more about them and getting themselves in position yeah. to actually do it when they get a bigger platform. But I don't want to wait till I get a, pla a bigger platform. I'm willing to share what I got now with these real niggas from the street because I know what it is when we cut from a different cloth. You know what I'm saying? It's all it's, we, we all the same cloth, just a different cut. But a lot of motherfuckers be super solid and they don't get that shot. Well, see, you know that, that, that takes me into something I've been talking about for probably the past few weeks. Um, 
And I've been having conversations with um, my dude. He go by Obscene Question on IG. I call him Don the Designer. Um, and we was talking about, like, what's the end game? Like, with this new momentum that's going, that's going out, coming out of Upstate. Um, and I think it's written in one of my questions, but I'm going to go early on it. Something along the lines of what happened with death row on the West coast. How are we able to take this momentum and monetize it to the point where, like you just spoke about you G4 Ito, uh, uh, um, TF and funk, TF and funk, uh, black G's, all these guys that yeah. one day they can retire off of this and, you know, be able to take the, you know, they should be living. Y'all should be living like Will Smith kids. Right. So mm -hmm. how do we make that happen in 10 to 15 years when we look back? What is this movement? What's the fruits of the movement going to going to be bearing? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, right now, like since I sat back and I watched and I've learned and, you know, I didn't run, run my motherfucking gyms all the time. Um, I soaked it all in and I followed a lot of things that, you know, uh, I've seen with P. God bless his soul. I've seen with Change Drugs. God bless his soul. And also, you know, meeting up with Griselda, I followed the blueprint and I told them from day one, listen, I'm following your lead. And I'm telling you that because I respect you and I love you as a friend. This rap shit, like I said, you know, it don't matter. If you could do it, you can do it, but right. that don't matter. But as a human being, when you see motherfuckers leveling up and you get the opportunity to be around them, your job is to only level up too. And me being that I'm from Far Rockaway, Queens and Lower East Side Manhattan, um, when I got up with the Griselda Bros, being that they from upstate, I've been a fan of the upstate music when, you know, Pro Prodigy introduced it to me. Because I don't really listen to rappers. I, you know, I listen to fucking Anita Baker and, you know, Luther Vandross. I listen to shit that my mom listened to to still get me, who, okay, you know, it brings me. I know, but I don't want to cut you off. I got to slow you down. Because now we now this is the, the, the stuff I like about interviews. He said Anita Baker. So this off the top of your head, this hit me with like two Anita Baker songs that's like on your favorites list. Uh, sweet, music. sweet love, obviously, Woo! is one of them. Um, but, you know, I listen, I listen to the shy days. I listen to that music that basically it brings me down to the person I need to be. Because if I listen to Conway and fucking Flea Lord, my, if I listen to my own music or I listen to Benny or, you know, of the Spesh, the Ethos, or all, if I listen to that shit all day. Subconsciously. It, it, it gets me a little angry. Mm. Of the person that I am because, you know, like it's taking me there. That that type of music, you listen to that shit to go to the gym or you go, you know, put in some pain. You know what I'm saying? Or a little motivation sometimes because yeah. the music is not always about that. It's a little motivation behind it. But yeah. I can't listen to rap because it makes me turn into someone else sometimes. Like it, I just, it triggers me. It, what's crazy is that I forget who it was I interviewed. One of my earlier interviews where I said to somebody who was working, and I forget who it, I've interviewed so many people, but... I was like, yo, is Flea always on go? I said that to somebody. They was like, yeah. Oh, I think you said that to Smash. Yeah. You said <laughs> yeah. it to Smash, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I am. I am always on go. Like, shit, look, I'm going to keep it tall. While I'm out here right now, I just left Cali about a week and a half ago. Like I said, I've been chopping up with my brothers. You know, I did a video with Rock Marcy. I did a solo video with San Fran. And I shot another video with TF. And basically, I, you know, I want to build with these artists that I'm fucking with. And Rock Marcy's like, he's like, He's the legend to me, you know what I'm saying? He's the big bro. When he talk, I listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with Rock Marshy. I respect him a whole lot, you know what I'm saying? So um, I got to get up with bro, and, you know, um, I was on work time a week and a half ago, and I flew right back over here, and I'm here now. My hotel room doing this interview with you, bro. I got to go to the studio, so we're going to start moving in a second. Hopefully this motherfucker don't drop. You know what I, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not with, I'm not with, you know, paying for any features, but what I will do is give appreciation dollar because I know for you to go to the studio, it ain't free. Right. I know you need to get your mind right. I know you need to pay your engineer out. You know what I'm saying? Like that session. So like I break bread off of shit like that. If you going to work for Flea Lord on Flea Lord time, I try to break bread with you on that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's appreciation dollar. You're supposed to be able to, you know, pass a couple dollars. It's not about paying for the feature because it's not business. Business is five thousand, ten thousand. That's business. Right. And business is still good with you when you do it with your brothers. Right. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes it's never about the dollar with your brothers. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's a new. But thing. I learned that y'all building together, right? Yeah. By helping yeah, each other out. Yeah, and basically, like I said, like what I want to get to is, you know, you got to learn the five things of this rap shit. Mm. It's five things. Talk so about it. So basically, it's your screams. You know what I'm saying? It's your um. 
your CDs, your vinyls, vinyls. Your, your merch, merch. Which, you know, you know what I'm saying? Which is part of the vinyls and all that, but it's, then now it's like we're talking about clothing line, you know what I'm saying? Your hats, your t-shirts, your hoodies, and then your, 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 uh, your, uh, your shows. You know what I'm saying? And the, the cassettes fall in there too with the vinyls and CDs. But once you get that rolling, your streams, and you get your people to support you on a couple CDs, like if it was a fucking dub sack of weed or 50 a gram of coke, you sell your CD, you sell your vinyl, you sell your t-shirt, and you start generating something on your own dime. And then once you start doing that, you got to figure out beforehand, but it costs more money to do this. So you try to generate some money to have so you can do it, but you got to trademark and LLC your business. Not really per se trademark, but LLC that motherfucker. And then you start, you know, you get your EIN number and all of this shit because that's the start of you taking the next step on becoming a businessman and, uh, and employee identification yourself from a number, rapper. People. Yeah. Employee identification number. Just for those that exactly. don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you you separate yourself from being a rapper to a businessman. And, and that's what I am right now. Like, you know, I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting money in, but in see, my other brother's pockets. Flea. I hate to cut off Flea Lord. Y'all got to forgive me. Somebody's going to be in a comment section. Why you cut this man? I apologize. It's Flea Lord. I understand. But I, <laughs> you know, y'all, you always don't go, y'all. Y'all been on this live. Yeah. Before. Yeah, you got to listen, man. There's like, gems in here that I want to feed the people because if they don't get to chop it up with me, this is where they get the information. And if y'all wondering why we not, do it. why Flea not smoking right now, he counting down like eight more, eight, nine more minutes. Before he light up, because YouTube <laughs> always look at the beginning of my video and they will do Yeah, you know I'm ready. You know I'm ready. Look, you know I'm ready. We just counted down. They're like, why he ain't smoking? That's why he's not smoking. Give him a few minutes, he's going to be at it. Trust me. Let's talk about yeah. Lord Talk Trilogy, the latest project. What were you going for with this project? Um, or is this like just a continuation of the conversation you've been having all year? Or what was the thought behind this drop? Shit, man. You know, shout out to God bless, man. Um, Basically, he was the you know the first one I did a project with, with Lord Talk One in 2017, and being that he reached out, he sent me a couple beats, and Prodigy heard him, and uh, Prodigy, God bless his soul, was like, "Yo, that's your alchemist right there," off of like fucking five beats. He heard it from the start. Yeah, the legend heard it, and I reached out to Bless, and uh, we wound up doing Lord Talk One in 2017. Um, you know, I kept working. I dropped like two projects in 2017. Um, I dropped two in 2018, and and um, the second project in 2018 was Lord Talk uh, Part Two, in which I had Conway West, Crime Apple, Terminology, Mayhem Laurent, and one of my homies from my hood. Um, I dropped that part two, and you know, me and God bless, we had great chemistry. Either like if I did like a project and it was like a mix of producers, I would always reach out to God bless. Like I felt what Prodigy said that. I always had to keep that relationship with him. And we didn't get to do anything in 2019 with any Lord Talks because I felt I gave him one, you know, one in 2017, one in 2018. Let's take a break and develop the sound and, you know, let God bless get better with this shit. Let Flea Lord get better with his pen. Because you know, in the beginning, I still wasn't sure if I wanted to rap and I was still trying to figure it out. Like, it just be? was it for me. I know. And you getting ahead of me. Listen. I did my research and check this out. It's a lot of people that, that's watching this video right now, and they like, why he not following up on the prodigy thing? What you think? It's Mike Powers, man. I'm here. I, it's 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 on here. I'm just trying to go on order so I don't end up asking the same question twice. But we are gonna definitely get there on the song supply and demand. You say it's packed in my safe, a strap on my waist. I told him I was hungry, and they laughed in my face. Uh -huh. Can you talk about that line specifically? That line specifically, and what it means for you to have to had to get it out the mud ah uh, well well basically like shit you know when you're around motherfuckers that's actually you know doing things yeah flea lord knows a lot of people right mm. and i'm in tune with you know rich rich motherfuckers and um you know flea lord is here um you know taking care of his kids and i was out there in the street still you know what i'm saying shooter lord flea this is me you know what i'm saying but not that I'm a shooter unnecessarily go kill motherfuckers, but I'm going to hold you down and make sure nothing happens to you. That's the type of nigga I am. So when they say shooter, I'm not a killer. Mm -hmm. I'm a protector. I'm a provider and a protector. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to mind. So, you know, being, being the fact that, you know, I'm around with so many people and I see the position that people be in, you know, and 
I'm still out here fucking selling drugs and risking my life to, you know, provide for mine. So that, that basically, that bar is about motherfuckers that's actually in a position to do something to help someone and they laugh in your face and then when the tables turn, you start reaching out to that person and then the person that's actually in a better position now, like you don't need them no more, but you still don't change. You mm. still remain who you are. At the end of that song, um, you, mm. speak, you speak at the end of that song about not really being satisfied with yourself on your first album in 2017. You said you hadn't found your voice yet. Uh, talk to me about the evolution from, um, from then till now. And do you feel like you have finally found your voice? Ah, man, yeah. So in the beginning, you know, me definitely trying to find myself. Um, I, I, the bars was there. But Flea, like, you know, it's like, you know, I was like Easy e when, you know, you saw Straight out of Compton and he went in the booth. Yeah. The motherfucker lived that shit and he had it in him, but he didn't know how to put it together on, you know, on wax. And rap that shit, you know what I'm saying? It sounded like a motherfucker reading it out his phone or some shit. So I still was trying to find myself as an artist. You know, everything else was easy for me, like playing basketball, riding the bike. So I'm like, shit, I just got to practice with this motherfucker. And, you know, the first project, I wasn't satisfied with it because I felt like when I listen to it now, I'm like, that's my baby. But still all in all, Flea Lord wasn't who Flea Lord is today now. So I definitely found my motherfucking sound now. I'll keep up with whoever the fuck nigga's name. And I'm the most humblest person, but shit, you put me on the track with whoever, I'm going in. You go, you gonna hear me talk. You gonna hear me talk my shit. And on on, on TFOH, uh, the fuck out of here, right? You say yeah. how you talk about loyalty when money came. You ran off with the royalties. Uh, that sounds specific. <laughs> Who we talking about? Who greasy out here with the paperwork? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, I had a situation with you know with closing, you know, knocking the death off with the loyalty of death. So, um. Basically, I just feel like once once things start once things start getting better for yourself in life, you're gonna see motherfuckers show their true colors. You know what I'm saying? And not everybody's meant to win with you. Sometimes if you share your blessings, they're your blessings. You yeah. share your blessings, your blessings gonna stop because you ain't supposed to be sharing your blessings. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker turn ain't right now, it's not his blessing. So somebody actually somebody actually trying to take you up top on the royalties? That uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't nothing with music. It okay. wasn't nothing with music. What it was, it was just a. Uh, we didn't see eye to eye on on a business tip, and I just felt like, you know, um, they was asking for more money than what was supposed to be handed out. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't. I ain't a lick. You know what I'm saying? I definitely ain't no motherfucking lick, and I won't treat a motherfucker like he a lick. Right. Like I treat you how you supposed to be treated. How I want you to treat me. So um, it just didn't see eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? And we just went our own way. Listen, I got a nice background right here. I, I love my, 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 my background, my green screen shit. You know what I mean? But I hope everybody that's watching this is focused and they can see Flea got the best background. He out in Cali <laughs> right now. Man, I'm just in Cali, baby. You take this yo, trip, man. Yo, we'll be over here chilling together, my nigga. The palm tree. <laughs> yo. yo, hold on. Hold on, too. We got... Shout out my bro Funk P right here. I got Funk P with What's me. Deal, man. What's going you know what on, Funk P? You gonna wind up? You gonna, Lord? Yeah, yeah. You gonna wind up doing an interview with the homie too, Mike? You heard? Good people's right here. Real talk. And um, you know he 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 out here super solid, super official. What's that? Uh, what's that merch you rocking right there? What's on you? What's on the chest? Uh, this is something. Uh, this is some of the Soul Assassins. I got this hoodie from uh from uh from Mug and Mugs wind up giving me a hoodie yesterday because uh Flea Lord then flew out to Cali with a bag with two hoodies and two pair of jeans and. Two change of clothes. I don't give a fuck, man. I'm working. You know what I'm saying? We we out here. I could go hit the mall up and fucking drop a bag, but I don't give a fuck about clothes and looks. I'm working. First of all, the album is is flames. Lord Talk trilogy. I listened to it uh, yesterday. Shit's crazy. It's got um. I hear some um classic golden era elements is on this album, and you also I hear guitars. The beats is crazy. The bars is flames. But let's move on to the thing I know a lot of people really want to talk about right now. Or they want me to talk about. Prodigy. Uh, let's get into this. Mob Deep is my favorite group of all time, or if you want to say favorite duo. All right. Um, the infamous album uh changed my life. Um, every song on that joint, it's a non-skip. You don't skip nothing on that album. Prodigy, what was your relationship? He, he, 
he had a love for you. He embraced you. What was that relationship like? Ah, uh, man, like, the shit with Pete, I ain't gonna lie, like, I, oh, man, I, I could get into the story. I really don't like to name drop, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this was many, many years ago, and I was a teenager, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think I was, like, 19, 18 at the time. This is mad years ago. Uh, Prodigy had a situation with Saigon. And you remember, like, I think he, like, clothesline people, punch piece. Some, some shit had happened. And I've been a fan of Prodigy, and then I had close homies of mine that were cool with Prodigy. And uh, basically, um, Saigon was shooting a video somewhere, like, in Midtown with, like, Reno or some shit. But they didn't, you know, Prodigy didn't call me and no shit like this. This is my homies that was cool with Pete. They called me and was like, yo, the nigga Saigon is in Midtown shooting a video. So, you know, this is me young at the time. I was like, I'm going to go I'm gonna go over here. So I, I went over there. And um, like I said, I, you know, this is not something that I brag about because I was young and stupid at the time. And thank God nothing happened. You know, so this is why I can't talk about it. Because when I went over there, I saw Saigon and I saw Mano. And then it was like police, like it was a police car over there. But I had the Schwam Bowley on me. I had the big Desert Eagle on me, teenager. Ready to go over there on the strap of Prodigy, of Prodigy, and just him being my favorite rapper. I didn't even know P. Oh. So like this was crazy. Um, him being, him being my favorite rapper, and it was like, oh, Saigon so stuff, my nigga. Like fuck out of here. But I was on dumb time, and you know, I, like I said, I called my homie up, like yo, the boys right there. Like shit, you want me to wait till the boys leave? He like, nah, come over here. So when I get over there, uh, they were Prodigy, whatever, and um. You know, P air hustling hears me talking and, you know, basically like basically saying I was going, you know, go let that shit fly over there. And, uh, you know, uh, P was like, yo, nah, shorty, like, hell no, I don't need you to do that for me, man. You're going to get me locked up. Um, I wind up moving from Queens to Lower East Side where, you know, where, where that shit happened at. So, like, I was on shit. I almost let that shit go for Prodigy and, and Prodigy saved Saigon because... My older homies, like some of them that are no longer around no more, you know, um, they just, you know, they're alive and well, but, you know, that's what the loyalty and death stand for. Like, niggas be dead to me whether you're alive or not. Like, I just cut you off. But I learned lessons from shit like that because I wasn't a doja, but on the strep of P, I would have did it. But I almost threw my life away, man, for some shit like that. And P kind of, like, talked me out of it. And thank God I didn't shoot at Saigon at that time. And, you know, it was just a crazy thing. Like, you know, like I said, I didn't want to eardrop. And say names and all that, but let me let me just be clear. Like, flea ain't nothing like that no more. I'm a different man, but I definitely almost, you know, I almost did it. I almost threw it away, bro. Years ago. Oh, and you didn't even know Prodigy at the time. <laughs> nah, he was my favorite rapper. Flea Lord be on go, man. This nigga crazy. <laughs> but y'all did get to know each other. Y'all was y'all was in the studio together before and stuff like that. Yeah, from that. From yeah, from that point on, like, I, what I didn't get to was that Prodigy asked me to give him my gun that day because he was like, yo, I can't trust you. You might go over there. I'm like, so he wanted my gun. I gave Prodigy my gun off the strength of my man's, like, really telling me, like, yo, you could give Peter, you know, he won't bring you back. I ain't going to get you on the hammer. But I, I was thinking, like, shit, I'm like, if my favorite rapper get me on my gun, P, man, I'm going to get your ass, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because P was like, yo, give me the gun and I'll bring it to you where you live at. You know what I'm saying? Give me a hatchet. I'm going to go there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, P took the gun to me. He took the gun and he drove the gun to me. And, and that Porsche he had when, you know, when 50 signed them niggas back in the days. This is around that time. Okay, got you. Know you know what I'm saying? Uh, he pulled up on me in the blue Porsche uh, on the side of my building and brought me back my Desert Eagle, bro. Ooh, rock you in your face, stab your brain with your nose bone. Rest in peace. Prodigy. Yep, and then we got, from, from that point on, we got cool. And then Prodigy wound up doing his bid. And then when he came home, we linked up again. And then it was like every day, hang, he'd be jotting shit down in his head. You know what I'm saying? Coming up with bars. And they'd be like, yo, listen to this, man. I was just, you know what I'm saying? Jotting some stuff down. He'd be in my crib writing the chick and just chilling and shit. And Lower East Side walking around that head. Me and P got super tight. And then it's like, um, to where like I would freestyle with P. And then he was like, yo, bro, like, I think you should take rap serious, like, but I was selling drugs and I had a job. I didn't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't care about rap at the time, and, you know, thank God that Pete really, like, pushed that shit on me, and then when he passed away, it's like, I took it very serious, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I felt like I had to carry the torch. But if Prodigy never told me to rap and take it serious, this would have never, you know, I wouldn't be here doing an interview with you right now, bro. I got a lot more to thank uh, Prodigy and Mob Deep for it and just the fantastic music and changing the culture, but also uh, Prodigy encouraging Flea Lord to get on that microphone because now we got the privilege of having him on the Mike Power Show. So thank you again, Prodigy. Rest in power. Um, so during New York's downtime, um, in, in, in New York's downtime, a, a lot of cats sounded like they was from Atlanta. Or New Orleans. Uh, I'm assuming you stayed true to what New York is the whole time. How how were you able to stand firm on your sound when so many people are just jumping around or, or jumping shit from what the New York sound was? Shit, yeah, man, we gotta thank P again, bro, because um, I ain't gonna lie when I when I first like when P said to take rap serious, I started rapping like what was winning at the time, and P like, man, what the fuck? He like, we talk your shit, you be rapping, man, like don't don't try to do that. So I was like. Nah, he like, nah, rap like this. So I found that lane, which was like basically the underground hip hop lane, like that, 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 that talk, you know, that, that reality rap. I rap reality rap. I don't rap about shooting motherfuckers because who am I shooting? I don't rap about getting niggas lined up because who am I lining? I don't rap about drugs because I don't sell drugs no more. I did before and I, you know, I don't want to embrace that to the youth and the, and the young motherfuckers that's listening to me. So I still pass on a message and I still talk that shit, but I don't glorify it. You know what I'm saying? And, and thanks to P that I found that lane. And, and now I still go and do, you might hear me double rap on some shit now, like, and bring me back to the days when I first started, like, shit, I, this is what I wanted to do too. You know what I'm saying? Show motherfucking my versatility. You blending it though. Yeah, yeah, but it's still the organic reality rap of my life, just painting a picture of who the Lord is and how he's supposed to be as men. 